It's not an overstatement to say that semiconductors power the modern world. They're not only a key component of nearly every electronic device we buy and use, they also power the factories that make the electronic devices we buy and use. They power our laptops, our cell phones, our cars, our washing machines, our refrigerators. Yeah, even our refrigerators. And this is just the stuff in our home. We're not even getting into all the ways semiconductors are important to the military and to the power grid. If software is eating the world, then the chips are the teeth. And now there aren't enough of them getting made, a massive global shortage. And it's getting so bad that General Motors, one of the world's largest automakers, said it could lose up to $2 billion because the semiconductor chip shortage forced it to temporarily shut down some auto manufacturing plants. President Joe Biden just ordered economic and national security experts to look for gaps in the semiconductor supply chain in the United States. They want to see how reliant the U.S. has become on other countries to manufacture semiconductors. Here's how the global chip shortage got so bad and what's being done to fix it. So what are semiconductors? It's silicon with, with uh, transistors built into it. And these circuits are put into basically any product these days that needs power. Generally, uh, every, every single electronic product these days has, has these chips in them that allow them to do what they do. When people talk about semiconductors now, they're talking about the advanced microchips that power smartphones, computers and cars, and advanced medical equipment, and the analog semiconductor devices that power radios and thermostats. The transistor, a kind of semiconductor, was first successfully demonstrated in 1947 at Bell Labs in New Jersey. Its inventors won the Nobel Prize for Physics, created the first tech companies in Silicon Valley, and basically laid the foundation for the modern digital world. After the transistor came the integrated circuit, the microprocessor, etc., etc., until the super small, super advanced chips we have today. Now, the semiconductor industry is massive. Within the industry, there are semiconductor companies that design the chips, called fabless companies, and there are companies that manufacture them, called foundries. There are also integrated device manufacturers, like Intel, that both design and manufacture chips. More and more, though, major semiconductor companies are adopting the fabless model and contracting out orders to foundries like Taiwan Semiconductor or Samsung. And that trend toward fabless has helped complicate the chip shortage we've all been hearing about. The U.S. chip industry has captured 47% of the global market share in sales, but only 12% in chip manufacturing, according to the Semiconductor Industry Association. So how did this all start? Well, COVID-19. The coronavirus pandemic forced people to work from home, to go to school from home, to just basically do everything from home. People upgraded their computers, they got smart speakers, tricked out their home theaters, and played a lot of video games. Businesses scrambled to set up remote work systems and needed more cloud infrastructure. So what became very clear is that if, uh, electronics companies, you know, just there was a supply chain disruption. But once that kind of started working its way through in the summer and China started getting back to work, electronics companies needed knew that they needed to increase production by a lot. There's no sign that the demand is slowing for semiconductors. Global semiconductor sales totaled $439 billion in 2020, and that's an increase of 6.5% compared to the 2019 total of $412.3 billion, according to the Semiconductor Industry Association. Global sales for the month of December 2020 were $39.2 billion, an increase of 8.3% compared to the December 2019 total. Another big reason for the shortage? Cars are getting more advanced, and they need more semiconductors. In fact, right now, it's the auto industry that's feeling the squeeze in computer chips most acutely. Cars not only need advanced chips to run increasingly complicated in-vehicle computer systems, they also need older, less advanced semiconductors for things like power steering. The auto shortages are happening because the auto OEMs canceled all their orders in the midst of COVID last year, and it just takes the supply chains um, a, a while to adjust. Uh, we've had some, some whipsaws. So that would be happening anyways. It's not really the semi guy's fault, it, it's the auto supply chain. But the, to the extent that the shortages themselves are sort of focusing attention and jump-starting the debate on what we should be doing in terms of semiconductor manufacturing in, in the US, I think that actually is where the discussion can be useful. Analysts expect the chip shortage to persist well into 2021. We are in a real difficult situation. Of course, we've heard from the likes of AMD's Lisa Sue and others about uh, the expectation of this lasting about six months. 
So 100 days, if, if, if her interpretation is right, is going to put us nearly all the way out, well over halfway into that six month period. And I really do wonder, are we able to shorten this delay at all with any action that could be taken right now? I think the Biden administration really needs to focus on how do we not allow this to happen again? Semiconductors have been so essential to nearly every single industry, the chip shortage has forced the White House to take steps to shore up the chip supply chain in the United States. We, we need to stop playing catch up after the supply chain crisis hit. We need to prevent the supply chain crisis from hitting in the first place. And in some cases, building resilience will mean increasing our production of certain types of elements here at home. And others will mean working more closely with our trusted friends and partners, nations that share our values so that our supply chains can't be used against us as leverage. The Biden administration is not going to lump everything together in one giant bundle and then negotiate that geopolitically with China. They're going to look at what's national security, what's economic security, and there's a close link between the two. Let's focus on what's more important, most, most important. You see the Biden administration doing it with, uh, with, with the supply chain. Uh, and with and with the semiconductor industry. And let's focus on how to address risk, how to have independent testing. Um, and, but fundamentally, the, this administration is gonna work multilaterally with our allies to try to figure out how do we work all these things together to make sure we're safer. And I'm heartened to see that the United States is gonna not just block countries, companies, they're going to make America more competitive in industries such as the semiconductor industry. And that's how we're going to maintain and grow our lead over China in terms of technology innovation. At the semiconductor companies, executives say they'll be able to ramp up production to end the shortfall, but that likely won't happen until later in 2021. After the immediate shortages get resolved, the demand for semiconductors is only supposed to increase. New 5G telecom networks need smartphones with 5G-enabled chips. The so-called Internet of Things will put chips into more and more everyday devices. And the remote work brought on by COVID-19 appears here to stay. China is attempting to become self-sufficient when it comes to semiconductor chips. Right now, it imports most of its semiconductors. You know, Beijing has always had big ambitions to have its own homegrown industry. Uh, but the U.S. restrictions not only on sales to, the, to China for chips, but also especially on a telecoms giant Huawei, uh, that has really acted as a stimulus for the industry. So Beijing has uh, made chips a top priority uh, for its next five-year plan, which is going to be unveiled in March. Independence is one of five, quote, fundamentals of China's economic development. And $1.4 trillion has been earmarked to develop the semiconductor industry by 2025, with the goal to have 70% of chips used in China, made in China. I think COVID-19, a lot of people in, in the business world start to really look at our supply chain. Uh, because of COVID-19, and we, you know, we—it's no secret that the electronics manufacturing is kind of based in China, right? But what people kind of don't know is that the number one pure chip factory in the world is in Taiwan. That's TSMC. Now, Taiwan's an ally. Ta Taiwan has not had the trade issues that China has, but it's still an island off the coast of China. So there was a lot of discussion early in the pandemic last year that we, we have to look at this stuff from a geopolitical standpoint, because, you know, if the military can't make a jet uh, because they don't have chips, and then Taiwan is caught in a political, geopolitical dispute, a lot of people just said, we need the ability to make leading node chips here in the United States. What exactly is a semiconductor? It's a nucleus, M shell, K shell, L shell, conduction band. A semiconductor can be defined as a material that has the characteristics and ability to conduct a small amount of electrical current in a controlled manner. Blah, blah, blah. There are several materials that are used to make a semiconductor. The basic requirement of a semiconductor is one that's good at controlling and converting energy. Okay, let me quit playing around. Yeah, 
That was not the definition of semiconductors, or at least the definition I would like to teach you guys on. Basically, semiconductors are chips. It's in everything from a car to drones, the phones, smartphones, watches, everything, computers, even your fridge. So think of it as the brains behind your phone. Your phone can't operate without brains. Just like the Scarecrow in Wizard of Oz, if you only had a brain. And my head, I'd be scratching while my thoughts were busy hatching if I only had a brain. Same thing. Your phone can't operate without a brain. And so these semiconductor chips, you may have heard of them. Most people, when they think of semiconductors, they think of train conductors. Nothing to do with trains. I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. Everybody strap in. Although some trains may have semiconductors in them, actually. So just think of semiconductors as the brains behind your phone, your car, or drones, or your watch. And as I said before... I'll give you a visual on it. It's the brain of the computer. So this small chip, which is a semiconductor chip, think of it as a brain. Inside your brain is hardware that sends senses so your body can make movements. Same concept with semiconductors. It tells your phone, it tells your electronics how to move. We have it in VR headsets. We have it in cars now especially Tesla, Ford, and EVs. It's in your home, Wi-Fi, music, everything you could think of, semiconductors are in. Also, too, it's made around the world, $400 billion. Yes, that's billion dollars are spent every year on it. So global sales, U.S. versus the rest of the world, U.S. is number one. Japan's number two. Looks like Korea is in there. Also Taiwan, China, EU. And the reason being, most U.S. Americans have more money to buy technology that's newer and also the latest greatest. As far as industry revenue and R&D, which is research and development, the United States spends quite a bit of money on it because, as you know, U.S. has way more money than other countries to spend money on research and development. And so all that is, is research and development just means more money into finding innovative and newer ways. Also, what you see right here is exports. Exports is goods and services that go outside the country. So Semiconductors are right there with it. It's one of the fifth largest ones with airplanes, cars, and oil. So semiconductors are right there with it. If you already did not know. And semiconductor chips are produced in mass quantities around the world. And definitely in the USA. Here is a map right now of the USA. Just showing some of the companies that we have all over. The map where they're produced, the reason semiconductors are so important to America's economy. I'll go over a few things that you may or may not have known. Semiconductors are the brains of modern electronics. We talked about that. Not just electronics like your vehicle. You got to think military and defense. So missiles actually need chips. So that could be some issues too. Also cybersecurity. Without cybersecurity, it puts your country at a threat. So that's why it's so important. The U.S. semiconductor industry, and this is 2020, had about half of global market share and sales of $208 billion. The semiconductor industry employs over a quarter of a million people. So that's a lot of people, a lot of jobs. It's also nearly half of semiconductor manufacturers production is done in the United States and 18 states are home to major semiconductor manufacturing facilities such as Intel. Semiconductors are a top five export. We talked about that and more than 80% of semiconductor companies are to overseas customers. 
So that's 49 billion in 2020. So that just means that just like oil and also cars, planes, semiconductors are top five. That's why it's so important to Joe Biden and even President Trump semiconductors, because if USA fails and it's not designing as many as it was before and another country designs better chips and make them more quicker. Yeah, that's a security issue. That's a national security issue. So let's take a look here. U.S. manufacturing of semiconductors has fell from 37% of global output in 1990 to 12% in 2020. And China is aiming to become the global leader by 2020. Or I, I should say 2030. The Defense Department has tried to buy computer chips from secure domestic producers. So you have chip shortages going on right now. We all seen where Ford had to shut down some of its stations and also GM too had to shut down some of its production due to to the pandemic and worker shortages without semiconductors you can't do a lot of things apple same thing artificial intelligence you need it without artificial intelligence in your phones and also two data centers chips are so important to the economy like i said it's a top 5 export meaning it's top 5 with oil, cars, planes, it's top five. It's that important. And without it, we can't go about our daily business. I'm going to show you some old information and new information just so you see how times have changed. This is fabrication capacity in 2019. As you can see, North America was 28%, Taiwan, was not too far off from it so that just shows you the fabrication capacity in 2019 just means companies that fabricate chips it's changed it's a lot of players that have hands in this so it's very important for us to be, become a leader and continue to be a leader in it because china has no capacity to produce semiconductors in 1990 but by 2020 it had nearly 13 percent of production and it's projected to reach 24% by 2030, which would make it the world leader. So U.S. and China are in a fight right now, a dogfight for control of the semiconductor manufacturing business. Let's take a closer look at this chart. On the left side, you see China in the red at the very bottom, 1990, 0%. So 0% share of global semiconductor manufacturing. So they had 0% in 1990. Now China has trended up. And USA, if you look over there on the left side, up above 35%, USA has trended down. And so that's just showing you US versus China. Another reason for the US to build their own semiconductors and take part in an ecosystem where you do all the work is because of Department of Defense. Other countries can infect your data or your missile defense or your systems with viruses and malware. So you don't want that. What happens when you're not able to send out the missiles right or have the capabilities to make these transactions with the equipment because it's malware involved in it. So it's very important that the U.S. takes part in global uh market share and creates their own. That's why it's so important, you know, going from 35% down to below less than 15% now. And it can be very confusing because you see all these charts and you see some and you're like, wow, it looks like U.S. is winning the battle. But also too, just as Trump used to say fake news, there is fake data showing that U.S. is in control. And that's because you don't want to see your enemies at an advantage, knowing that you need them more than they need you. And so U.S. and China has been in a war against each other using the media. And so sometimes you will see charts and you will see data that's misleading or either they use it and manipulate it in a way to make each other look better than the other. 
But the real story is when COVID-19 happened and the pandemic shut everything down, what country continued running efficiently and what country had issues? U.S. had issues. A lot of stoppages. Ford, GM, Tesla was the only one that continued on. So you have to sometimes be able to sift through the information and make your own decisions. China has most of the manufactured or assembled work because China has cheaper labor. So that's a no brainer. Thirty five percent. Looking at this chart, you have to use logic with these charts and be able to understand and sift through the information to know that U.S. labor charges more. So China's cheaper. So that's, they're going to get most of the business. And that puts the U.S. and other countries at a disadvantage from a security standpoint, national security. China's able to manipulate ships that can cause issues. So you see why it's so important for U.S. to be a leader in the semiconductor business. There's four areas in the semiconductor business. You have manufacturing, equipment, design, fabrication, and packaging. All of these are important to the industry. So there's very few places that do all of these things. Some do a few things better than others, but there's very few companies that do it all. Fabrication firms that physically fabricate these ICs, traversing the designs into silicone. You also have assembly, packaging, and test. Firms that package the IC into a chip, a form factor suitable for product manufacture. The U.S. dominates the fabulous IC segment. Taiwan dominates the foundry segment. So you see you have all these different places that control different things and do other things differently well. So nobody does one thing better than the other. But you have a few things where others excel at it that you don't. With that said, there is a bottleneck status. There are dominant companies such as TSM and also ASML. They can just do things that other places can't. So it gives them bottleneck status or, as you would say, a monopoly. So you have TSM, ASML dominating the industry. I just want to put some information out there. I'm not trying to position you in either or or direction. Just give you the information. This is a national security report from the USA on Department of Defense and why chips are so important. So that goes to show you how important chips are to not just you, but also to the world. Right here it says China's plans, resources, and progress should concern all Americans. So this is USA. This is a Department of Defense report, and they're talking about China. That goes to show you that it's very important from a systematic and also Department of Defense aspect. It's not just about your telephone or your smartphone or your computer. It's bigger than that. Missiles cybersecurity, everything is involved. Clearly stated in its conclusion, it says, we know China is determined to surpass us in AI leadership. We know advances in AI build on themselves and confer significant first mover advantages. Now we must act. So this is public information. You can find this anywhere. Just Google it. If you want to go deeper into it, just Google it. National Defense Authorization Act or CHIPS Act. It's just U.S. saying that we're going to commit long term to building more semiconductor companies and into research and development. So this is public information. This is America acknowledging that China is better than America at designing chips. So when you see these graphs and you see this data, that's one thing, but when you see actual information like this, yeah, this tells you clearly that U.S. 
sees China as a major threat and China has an advantage. So beware of data and information. I don't care who it's from. It could be from Wall Street Journal, CNBC, question it, kind of look at it, and also get some other feedback from other people. And from an individual standpoint, how can you capitalize off the information I'm giving you in this video? There's countless companies out there. Intel's one of them, NVIDIA, Texas, Instruments, Micron, Analog Devices, Microchip, Sky, Works, Xilinx, AMD. All of these companies have a foot in the door with chips, semiconductor chips. You just need to find the right one that works for you. I won't point out which ones you should invest in because I don't want to skew you any way that I can, but I just want to assist you in finding some direction on what companies do produce semiconductors. Now, what I will tell you is that Intel has had some issues over the years. My favorites are AMD, Micron, NVIDIA, also a few others that are not on here. I know Xilinx and AMD were going to go in business together. That deal may have fell apart, I believe. So just do some research on these companies, figure out what works best for you. I'll be making a video soon of individual companies from an individual standpoint. I won't be doing it on this current YouTube. Just wanted to get you familiar with semiconductors.